I really do like this series, The Crown. Uh, it's focused in a very extensive way. It's fictionalized history, but it's focused quite a bit on the uh, the reign of Queen Elizabeth II, and it is a remarkable one, of course, spanning from uh, the World War II era all the way up to, well, I'm guessing it's going to take it through present day. But the latest season, the fourth season of this series on Netflix, has come out on the 80s. And the 80s in England was about two things, Charles and Diana, and Margaret Thatcher. And I'm not a big Charles and Diana aficionado, but I'll tell you this, I don't like the way they're portraying Margaret Thatcher. Joining us right now to discuss that is now Gardner. He's the director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation and also a former aide to the Iron Lady. Now, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure, Larry. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, I, I, first of all, I think that the actress, the actress, by the way, is uh, Gillian Anderson from The X-Files, and she portrays, uh, it almost feels like a caricature. It's like somebody doing a Maggie Thatcher impersonation instead of actually somebody embodying this person, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's certainly a very interesting portrayal. So I've, I've seen the first four episodes of uh, season 10. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've, we've caught, uh, you know, quite a few glimpses of, of Iron Lady, uh, the Iron Lady being portrayed. Uh, in these first four episodes, uh, and I think it's you know it's rather it's rather mixed actually. I think firstly on on the positive side, uh, I would say that um, certainly in the first part of this season, the portrayal of Margaret Thatcher is more sympathetic than I than I expected, and there are some very good scenes where uh, where Lady Thatcher talks about hunting down IRA terrorists after the assassination of uh, Lord Mountbatten. Also, I think the the scenes of Lady Thatcher's strong leadership uh, with regard to the uh, the leader of the Falklands War mm-hmm. uh, are done are done very well. But as you say, on the other hand, there are there are some scenes where she comes uh, comes across as, as really just as a, as a caricature of of the Iron Lady rather than embodying the the greatness of uh, someone who was one of the greatest figures of our time. So I think it's very mixed in terms of its its overall uh, portrayal. Uh, but certainly, of course, the you know the the makers of the crown, the producers of the show, have, have done a good job overall, in terms of, I think the uh, you know the production design, the the scene Oosh. setting, the, the cinematography, etc. Oh, but, the, yeah, but, oh, it's uh, a you high know, class production. You know, leave, leave something to be desired, certainly in terms of some of the portrayals uh, in in this uh, in this season. I agree. And you mentioned the Falkland War and the protection of the Falkland Islands um, as part of the British Commonwealth and. They, the narrative they create suggests that Margaret Thatcher, uh, mobilized the British military, uh, in the Falklands conflict as a result of her, uh, uh, frustration over her missing son who had been lost for several days in Algiers in a day. You know, it's like she, she felt powerless about finding her son and therefore I'm going to send the military out for this, 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 uh, this, this war. Um, as as in some way as some emotional release. Did you pick that up? Because that's how I saw it. Yeah, so I, I I did see that. I think it's in episode three, actually, episode three or four, episode mm. four. Um, I would say that the Crown basically is conflating two separate issues here: the uh, the fact that Mark Thatcher, uh, Lady Thatcher's son, went missing for several weeks, um, and and the Falklands War. They they are not related at all. Right. Uh, and <laughs> and I think that this show deliberately conflates the two. Uh, and uh, in no way, I think, were they were they related at all. Uh, certainly, of course, uh, you know, Margaret Thatcher was hugely concerned about her her son going missing in in Africa. I think it was the Paris to Dakar uh, uh, race, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this in no way had any impact, of course, uh, on her leadership of the Falklands War. Uh, and uh, as is often the case with these Hollywood sort of dramas, they they like to conflate uh, a sort of a family drama together with you know, some big picture sort of political issues. But the reality is that, you know, Margaret Thatcher was, was a lioness on the world stage who, who uh, ensured that British territory in the South Atlantic, the Fulton Islands, were taken back after Argentina invaded the I- islands uh, yes. in 1982. And Margaret Thatcher ensured that British territory was returned to the British people and that the Fulton Islanders were liberated. We're speaking with Nal Gardner, director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation, and uh, the, the the series certainly portrays a frosty relationship 
between Prime Minister Thatcher and Queen Elizabeth. Is that your understanding of, of the, I would think they would have so much in common and, and Queen Elizabeth would actually be very impressed with Margaret Thatcher politically as well as her incredible story, uh, at how she, she rose from, you know, daughter of a grocer to become the first female, uh, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very, a very good question. And uh, I should mention that I, I worked for Lady Thatcher after she was Prime Minister. So I was not actually there at the time, uh, you know, during the, um, the depiction of, of the crown, this season of the crown. But mm-hmm. I would say this, that, you know, Margaret Thatcher always had tremendous respect for uh, Queen Elizabeth II. My understanding uh, is that uh, the two actually got on far better than, uh, than portrayed uh, in the, the TV series uh, The Crown, uh, and uh, the Queen actually attended um, Margaret Thatcher's uh, 80th birthday party in, in London. I was also there, and I had the opportunity to meet the Queen uh, at the birthday uh, party, uh, and it was a very rare appearance, actually, for, for the Queen to make mm. at a birthday of a, of a politician. Uh, and so I think it was actually a, a very close relationship, um, and, and certainly without a doubt, I think Olivia Coleman portrays Queen Elizabeth extremely well, but I, I think the scenes between Margaret Thatcher and, uh, and Queen Elizabeth II are not entirely accurate, uh, and I don't think it was a, a cold, uh, icy relationship mm. uh, at all, uh, and certainly Lady Thatcher had immense respect for the Queen. Yes. And, and finally, now, Gardner, and I don't want to give any spoilers out here, but everybody knows that uh, after 11 historic years, the longest serving prime minister of the 20th century, Margaret Thatcher, did lose the confidence of her conservative party. But it is portrayed, uh, and you'll get to this in the uh, final episode, it's portrayed very much over uh, her reluctance to go on board with the European Union, which was really uh, sort of the momentum behind the EU was building at that point in 1990 or 1990. 1989. Is that accurate? And if so, well, history has certainly proven Lady Thatcher to be absolutely spot on. Uh, yes, and I'm still looking forward to seeing that particular episode. Uh, but without a doubt, I think Europe loomed large uh, with regard to the, the downfall of Lady Thatcher. And ultimately, of course, she was betrayed by uh, members of her own uh, cabinet who turned uh, against her. And, and Margaret Thatcher won three general elections in a row, a spectacular record as a politician. She never lost a general election, uh, but she was removed by the left wing of her own conservative party, the Wets, as she used to refer to them. Mm. And one of the issues certainly was Europe. And Margaret Thatcher uh, was a big believer in British sovereignty and self-determination. In her later years, uh, she supported Britain leaving uh, the European Union. And her 2002 book, Statecraft, actually became the genesis of, of Brexit. Uh, and it really paved the way for the 2016 referendum, which led to the UK leaving uh, the European Union uh, earlier this year. So Margaret Thatcher played a huge part, actually, uh, in helping uh, Britain take a different path in Europe and helping to ensure that ultimately uh, the United Kingdom eventually left the European Union. And this, this is her legacy today. Uh, and Margaret Thatcher would have mightily uh, celebrated uh, Brexit were she, were she uh, alive today. By the way, no mention of the uh, victory in the Cold War, uh, crushing the Soviet Union and her incredible uh, uh, role there. But, uh, you know, I, we'll have to write our own series. Actually, now, Gardner, real fast, uh, she's been portrayed several times now, Lady Thatcher has. What's your favorite? Is there, in your mind, one appropriate or, or uh, uh, I guess, faithful portrayal of Lady Thatcher in your mind? Yeah, a great question. I've seen many depictions of Margaret Thatcher on, on screen. Now, I'll say this about, you know, Meryl Streep's uh, performance. It was actually very good, very lifelike. The film itself wasn't a great movie, The Iron Lady. Mm. Uh, but, but Meryl Streep certainly captured, I think, a lot of the mannerisms and, uh, and, and the voice and, and the characteristics of, of Margaret Thatcher. Uh, but The Iron Lady itself was, it was a disappointing a film. I, I don't think that any movie really has done full justice to the greatness of the Iron Lady, who mm. who really changed the course of history, uh, and, and was a great uh, fighter for for freedom uh, and for uh, you know sovereignty, self determination, and, and for the principles of liberty that we we cherish so uh, so deeply today.